You asked for it, so we answered. After last week's look at dialogue, you wanted us to look at silence. So here we are. And yes, this does mean we read the comments. So you can take right back all those nasty things you've ever said about our mothers. These are the top 10 uses of silence of all time. We start our journey at number 10, exploring specific moments that use a complete lack of sound to profound effect. It's probably most familiar to you in its post-explosion shell shock form, as in Saving Private Ryan and the Jarhead in the Book of Eli, but you find it in the void of space too, as in Gravity or Contact or 2001. It's the lack of the voice of God in silence, an unbearable moment in leaving Las Vegas, the moment before snapping in serenity. However, for our pick, we've got to give it to the minute of silence from Band Apart. <laughs> We think what's most special about this moment is how unique it really is. Silence. True silence in cinema is incredibly rare, like once in a decade rare. Most silences aren't even silent at all. They're ambiences and sound effects and sub bass and a subtle score, but not band apart. Godard's silence is the real deal, and it is so jarring for it. Comparing the discomfort of a conversational silence in a bar to the utter silence of the muted soundtrack. It's playful and formalist, and it interrogates itself in true Godardian fashion. Bon. Moi, j'en ai marre. Je vais mettre un but. One step up from the silent moment is the silent sequence, entire spans of film that build quiet into their essence. It's the beginning of There Will Be Blood, the ending of Upstream Color, developing photos in Blow Up, searching for a bug in the conversation, the phone call in The Departed, and almost anything suspenseful in any number of Hitchcock flicks. And while we love the heist in Le Cirque Rouge, we still don't think you can beat the one in Rafifi. It's 30 straight minutes of non-stop quiet, and it's silence for such a good reason. The synth sets up an alarm system that's set off by the slightest sound, so there's not just quiet out of convenience, but out of need, and the effect is brilliant. We become hypersensitive to noise, white knuckling on the edge of our seats. We could make a list about movie silences without at least acknowledging the entire era of films that had no choice in the matter. And while it would be crazy reductive to relegate all of silent films to a single slot on this list, that's never stopped us before. So what are the best of the best? There's The Passion of Joan Arc, Sherlock Jr., Metropolis, Battleship Potemkin, City Lights, Sunrise, and Intolerance. Hell, there's even a few modern examples like The Artist, Silent Movie, and Push Pack. However, if we had to pick just one, we'd pick F.W. Murnau's The Last Laugh. The Last Laugh is as silent a film as a silent film can be. Without a single intertitle to stand in for dialogue, every piece of information is told visually. And it's a uniquely fitting challenge for an expressionistic film by such a visually talented director. As a result, it is the ultimate incarnation of what the silent film can be, talking with pictures. So, what about films that might have sound but not dialogue? And there's actually not that many, if we're really strict about it. There's The Thief, a speechless 50s spy thriller, and Mobius, a Korean film about obsession and castration whose characters communicate only in nonverbal utterances, Thimrock, a French story told with only gibberish, and Le Ball, a 50-year history of France through ballroom dance. However, for our number seven pick, we're going with 2014's The Tribe. The Tribe is an entire feature with no words, no subtitles, just signing. But it's not non-verbal. There is language underlying it. It's just that your average viewer has no access to understanding it, so they're forced to rely on all the other cues available that we might normally ignore. It's a silent film for the sound era, fascinated by the expressiveness and personality embedded in the incomprehensible and utterly captivating for it. 
There's another subgenre of dialogueless film that we feel is worth mentioning. The tone poem. Think Samsara, Baraka, and Kronos. Think Koyani, Pawa, slash Nikoyakatsi. Think Scorpio Rising, or Bits of Tree of Life. And while we love all our honorable mentions for our number six pick, we think we have to take it back to the original Man with the Movie Camera. <laughs> Okay, so this one's a silent era film too, but it would still be just as dialogue free if it were made today. Man with the Movie Camera's style of expression is so far from the verbal, it's on a whole other planet. It's an attempt to create a whole new form of communication for the new medium of cinema. It's one of the purest incarnations of Soviet montage working free associatively in the audience's mind, creating the gestalt of a city with images and cuts and not a single word. Just like the tone poem, animated films also have a long history of telling stories sans words. There's something special about the hand-rendered medium that gives animators the control and the challenge enough to try to get everything across without words. Shaun the Sheep is probably the most recent example of this, but there's also the Triplets of Belleville, L'Illusionist, Blood Tea and Red String, Nine, The Red Turtle, and the beginnings of Up and Wally. And maybe this one's a gimme, but we think our favorite's gotta be Fantasia. <laughs> You may have noticed that we've gotten pretty far afield from actual silence here. Fantasia is, of course, an incredibly loud film. And even true silence isn't true silence, it's more of a lack that reveals what else you've been ignoring. So sometimes, silence just means music. And in Fantasia, that music becomes image and plot and story, while wisely avoiding words or diegetic sound. And with everything else stripped away, we're allowed to see how much it can really do. Of course, there are also films that maybe missed some of the no dialogue at all slots, but still don't really make language an important part of their narrative. These are films like The Color of Pomegranates, Eraserhead, The Match Factory, Film, Solaris, of course we're going to sneak in a mention of The Mirror, Mad Max, Drive, Le Samurai, Badlands, The Fits, Elephant, The Silence is an obvious Bergman pick, and our number four pick, Playtime. Tati's masterpiece, Playtime, is notable for so many reasons, and its near lack of dialogue is only one. Words are more sound effects than vehicles of language. Footsteps often convey as much as words. A non-Francophile would be just as well watching without subtitles, perhaps better. The effect of its quiet is again refocusing, this time to different relationships between people and the space they inhabit, humans and their society, us and our world. It reveals absurdism and silliness and humor in a beautiful updating of the silent film tradition. Some films take on subjects that either won't talk, can't talk, or can't understand each other. Whether it be in Walkabout, Son of Saul, or even the prehistoric quest for fire, the bear's main obstacle to communication is that its main characters are, well, bears. But our number three pick uses a post-apocalyptic affliction to render all of his characters mute in the last battle. The Last Battle is a film about a world gone silent. Its two total words of dialogue across its entire runtime take on an immense significance, not so much for their meaning which is inconsequential, but for the fact that they exist at all in that vacuum. Its built-in obstruction provides Luc Besson a wonderful opportunity to explore conflict visually in his first ever directorial outing, which he does with a clump. Of course, you don't have to worry about reasons to keep your characters from talking if there's no one to talk to. There's a whole genre of nearly silent films whose quiet comes primarily from isolation. These are films like The Naked Island, The Black Stallion, Castaway, Castaway in Space, Jerry, and our number two pick, All is Lost.
Solo survival tales like All Is Lost tend to fall squarely into the man versus nature conflict category and don't have much room or use for mincing words. And while some films employ various conceits to keep their characters talking, we have the utmost respect for those like All Is Lost that don't. Shandor trusts his toolkit as a filmmaker and Robert Redford's expressiveness to say everything he might need, taking it all the way back to the basics, survival. On the flip side, at number one, one of our favorite reasons to hear silence in film is for the relationship study without words. Things become clearer, simpler, more universal. We see how the words don't matter and it just comes down to emotional connection. Dialogue is just a clever mad lib. Strip it out and it's all the more understandable. Shame's first scene is a brilliant bit of this, as are whole swaths of nothing personal. But the real master of the unspoken duo is Kim Ki Duck, whose brilliant silences are top notch in the bow, nearly total in three iron, but never better than spring, summer, fall, winter, and spring. Spring's silence isn't just quiet, it's a meditation. The silence is powerful, aspirational, soothing, calming, peace. It uses words as Gandhi suggested, only when they would improve upon silence. And this is a rare occasion indeed. It exposes the beauty in silence, as Buddhist a film as we could imagine, which is why it's our pick for the best use of silence of all time. So, what do you think? Disagree with any of our picks? Do we leave out any of your silent faves? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more Cinefix movie lists.